Hi everyone, welcome to Overclocking TV Live and this is a live interview with uh, Denis Garcia, uh, Denis from the US. Um, he's one of, one of the overclockers that did compete in the MSI MOA 2014 uh, qualifier. So, hi Denis, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks a lot. Um, can you just present yourself a little bit more about the, uh, the viewers that do watch us? Okay, I am Dennis Garcia. I go by the name Red Max on Hardware Bot. I'm also the editor in chief of HardwareAsylum.com, which is a hardware review site. It deals with enthusiast level hardware, video cars, motherboards, and I also am the host of the Hardware Asylum podcast. Great, so welcome to uh, the Overclocking TV uh, show videos and live channel. So I do have a few questions for you because we are actually in the road to the Master Overclocking Internet 2014 show. Um, uh, why did you compete? Um, I, wa I competed because I thought it would be fun and uh, it'd be a way for me to promote my site, myself and the podcast if I uh, placed well, actually if I got an invite uh, ticket to compete. Um, and I've tried for the past several years to, to try to do that. And it's really just more of fun. <laughs> Actually, it's I think that most of the guys join for fun and to get a ticket to the final. Oh, um, yeah. Well, that's the main reason I think a lot of people competed, <laughs> just to get that ticket. <laughs> Free travel trip. Um, yeah. In which class did you compete? There was the class A and class B. In which one did you compete? I competed in class A. Uh, what was your main decision to compete in this class instead of the class B? Uh, class B was, um, I saw that as being, I call it the, the cheap ships edition, and then I saw that as being a exercise in bidding, and I really didn't have a lot of time to bin, so I went for Class A and decided just to, you know, spend some money and see how deep my pockets were. <laughs> and how deep they, did they were? Oh, well, the, they were deep enough to get me competing. That's, <laughs> So and all, to so, get yeah. some decent score at least. Um, talking about the scores, uh, what kind of hardware did you use for these competitions? Let's see, I used a Core i7-4790K and I used that on an MSI M-Power, which was the low-end overclocking board from MSI. And I paired that up with an R9-290X Lightning. Actually, that's uh, most of what the, one of the guys were using for the for the class A. It's uh, usually like one of the or the best CPUs in the Aswell series, as well as the 290X Lightning. Like most of the guys were using the Lightning. Mm -hmm. um, what was your plan at first before the the beginning of the scores qualifications? Let's see. My plan was to just to see how well I could place. Um, I knew that I wasn't going to have a lot of time and money to bin, you know, 49 or 4790K chips and I wasn't going to buy any more than just one lightning card. Um, my first scores that I submitted were just kind of placeholders so I used, I was testing out my 4790 and I matched that up with an R9-270X gaming card which is really noted for its inability to overclock but I was able to test out the chip and be able to be familiar more with uh, the Heaven benchmark which is something that I haven't done a lot with. Okay, actually, uh, what is the scores you're the most proud of it? Is that the SuperPy 32M, is that the 3D Park 03, or the Unigen even score? Actually, it's the Heaven score. Um, I, I'm not afraid to admit I do not do very well with 2D benchmarks. Um, my SuperPy score was really bad in efficiency. Um, I probably could have actually scored quite a bit better there with how fast my chip was running. Um, 3D Mark 03 is very dependent on how good your CPU is and matching being able to send data to the video card. Um, a lot of people have been using the super high-end video cards like the 290X, but you still need to be able to get the data from the CPU to the video card for it to be able to process very quickly. I see. Um, actually, if uh, I, I go back to your Ninja and even benchmark, you're actually ranked ranked 17th in the world. So actually, it's a top 20 score in the world. So congratulations. Yeah, well, thank you. I was very impressed with that score. Um, one of the last few questions is, um, how many liters of liquid nitrogen did you use to reach that kind of scores? Uh, let's see. When I don't have the luxury of going down to the, the local supplier and filling up my Dewar. I only have a 25 liter, so it would be a lot of trips. So I rented a 120 liter uh, doer of uh, liquid nitrogen, and I benched over two sessions. So my sessions tend to go a little longer than a lot of people. Um, I tend to sit down with the expectation of going for just an hour or two hours and 
six hours later, I'm now getting to the point where there's too much water around, so I'm going to have to stop. So I was able to do two six-hour runs. Uh, the first one was to lay down my 2D scores and to do an initial 3D uh, heaven score. And then the last one was basically refining my heaven benchmark score and getting that top 20 uh, result. Nice. Um, from now on, you are six, and uh, the class A qualifier is over. You are six. Um, mm -hmm. What was your expectation when you first started? Just putting a score, so you did expect secretly to be qualified for it. <laughs> well, I was actually playing the odds. Um, the class A, as we know, was you had four tickets to go, and in the United States, they divided the country in half based off of you know how many overclockers there are in the United States. So we had an East Coast and a West Coast conference. I am on the West Coast, and um, looking back at the past MOAs, there was a lot of East Coast overclockers that were actually placing really well, and not so many on the West Coast. So I was hoping to be able to score well enough to be able to loop myself in in um, my West Coast advantage, I should say. Um, unfortunately, Mike CDM, um, you know, I want to say he did this right. Um, I would post a score, and then later that day, he would post one that was just slightly better. And kind of getting me to push, and uh, we did that back and forth like two or three times, and it was actually really fun to see how that was going to pan out. And you know, the the day before the competition stopped, he said, "No, nope, no more sandbagging." Put out his best scores and went to work. I see, and still he finished second of the all qualifiers. Uh, actually, oh, yeah. as as a commentator and entertainer about these competitions, I do like people posting scores when they do them. Uh, it's okay to have a few backups, but it's not okay to just keep everything until the end. Uh, it's less entertaining than uh, anything else. Um, yeah. Well, thank you, Dennis, for your time. I, I, I do expect that uh, you're going to be uh, keep on uh, doing your stuff and doing your coverage about the overclocking things in your, on your website and in the podcast. Uh, thanks for your time, and um, have a nice evening. Yeah, thanks a lot. Take Bye. care.